Hey, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Arun and uh, I'm MCT, Certified Trainer from Microsoft. I'm working as a Solutions Architect with RecSpace, which is one of the best company to work with. And this is my YouTube channel. These are my personal views. <clears throat> so in this video, uh, I'm, I'm trying to cover a few uh it, it would be a small series of videos where i'll be covering application gateway end to end because uh i have seen people always talking about application gateway but there is so much to application gateway that we can explore and we can talk about and we can do the lab and i'll try to make this series absolutely lab oriented so that it will not become boring right so i'll try to cover the almost all the routing rules, whether it's, uh, you know, configuring the SS SSL or whether it's a URL based or multi-site or redirect, uh, what all features that this wonderful complex load balancer provides you. So be with me, uh, it would be a small series of couple of videos. So let's get started. So I have pre prepared the lab in advance so that we could save some time. I have created these two uh, Linux VMs of Debian and Ubuntu uh, flavors. And if I have installed Apache and Nginx web server, just to see the load is balancing when we will configure the application gateway. Right now, I'm just trying to show you public IP uh, of these VMs. So right now it is uh, Debian where we have Nginx. And if I go to Ubuntu, I uh, try to access this public IP address, I would have Apache. There we go. Okay, <clears throat> now let's quickly go to application gateway. Well, it takes time, it takes time to create. And uh, that's the reason I have created uh, this application gateway in advance so that I could show you. So let's click on add. And now as per the usual configuration of any resource that we create in Azure, we gotta select the subscription. That is my subscription. We need to select the resource group. I gotta select this resource group. This is the same resource group where my virtual machines are residing. I need to provide the name for my app gateway. So I'm saying app gateway 02. And my machines are in UK South. So I'm doing UK South and it is a layer seven load balancer and we load balance within the region uh, there would be an update coming soon but not ga as of now so l layers osi layer seven load balancer which which has a lot of features because it load balance on http and http attributes that it can it can see and load balance accordingly just just I just wanted to add it, but this is the lab. Be with me. It's a lab. So uh, tier, there is a tier where we have like four tiers as of now, standard and web for the old one, the classic one. Uh, classic or legacy, you can say whatever you would like to, but the standard V2 and WAF V2 is the is the latest. And this is where the Microsoft is investing. And we gotta choose these two. Uh, the old gateways are still maybe they have they're still using standard WAF. That's why these are there. But standard V2 or WAF. WAF is a web application firewall. If you want to use it, because this is one of the features. As I said it's not just a load balancer. It has so many other features that uh, that can help your application in load balancing, also in security. Because this is also this also provides the WAF. It's all because it works on layer seven. So we need, this, this is the very first video, we want the basic load balancing so that we could understand all the features, all the routing methods, step by step. So let's choose standard V2. It also provide auto scaling at the back end because what is happening, this gateway, 
Microsoft is spinning a couple of VMs at the back end to tackle all the requests. If requests are increasing, it's overwhelming, then uh, it will automatically uh, increase the instances to handle that load, to handle those many requests. So you can also enable the auto scaling, but right now we do not want it. It's a lab, we to save some money as well. Also try to understand the concept. So we only need one instance that would be more than enough for us. <clears throat> this is absolutely basic lab first lab where uh, we do not even need to choose the availability zone but you know what availability zone is this is for the availability in different zones you do not want http2 as of now and always remember app gateway we spin inside the virtual network so we also need an isolated subnet we do not want any other uh, subnet any other resource in that subnet. You can have multiple uh, uh, gateway though, I think so. Let me try to, yeah. And this is the RG, this is the virtual network. I selected the virtual network and app gateway subnet that I've already created for you, okay? So it's a subnet, uh, usually slash 27 or 28 is good enough. Uh, my created by default, so it's 24. I'm, I'm just saying with the, the architectural perspective, uh, 24 is so many IPs, but, uh, and also you should not spin up any other resources. Uh, if you would have, it will, it will not, it, it, it will not deploy there, but you can have multiple gateway in the same subnet. All right, let's click on the front end. Front end is where the traffic would be received. Let's see, let's make it public for our uh, understanding. I, ha I have to create one public IP for this. So I'm calling it app gateway 02 PIP. That's the public IP where the traffic would be received. <clears throat> Backends where uh, backend is the destination of the traffic, okay? It's where the app gateway uh, send the traffic. That's the backend, that's the destination. Okay, let me give it a name, backend. Uh, I do not want to add the machine now or you can add the machine now. Let's add the machine now right here, but it will take a lot of time to create and uh, we need to save time. So will you add the machine in the other gateway that I've already created for you? So for now, let's say uh, app backend pool without target, yes, and click add. That, that, there are multiple ways that you can uh, work with. So this is one of the way you can add right now or you can add later on as well. Let's click on the configuration. Now, if you see, let me do this. Front end we have configured, back end we'll add later, and here is the routing rule. What is routing rule? As the name says, that's how, these are the rules to route the traffic. Let me put it this way, like add a routing rule. Now, we gotta give the name to the rule. Let's say rule 01, <clears throat> listener. Listener is where uh, on, on uh, the traffic would be listened at the front end or the front public IP. Let me give it a name, listener 01. Now you could you could make uh, where the traffic is listening on this front end IP. Let me put it this way, public IP. Here the traffic would be listened, but how? Is it HTTP or is it HTTPS? That's how, right? For now, we are doing HTTP. This is the very first video, a basic one. And next one will make it secure. We can do the HTTPS as well. So for now, HTTP is good enough and port 80 by default for the HTTP. Listener type is basic. It's not multi-site. Multi-site would be third lab, I guess. In the sequence, it will go. And <clears throat> no error pages for now. So let's hit uh, add. Now I'm on the backend targets. Backend targets we have not added yet, but we need to add the name of the backend targets that we have set backend and target. Uh, there is no target, I'm sorry, uh, HTTP setting. There is no HTTP setting. I have to create one. You must be wondering what is HTTP setting. Well, this will determine how the traffic will fall on the destination. For example, let me call it HTTP setting 01. Right now it would be uh, unencrypted HTTP. HTTP would receive and HTTP would be uh, sent to the destination with the same backend port and protocol. 
all right and uh, <clears throat> there, there are additional settings that you can see here uh, we have cookie based affinity it is the uh, just like in load balancer we have session affinity this is what it is if you are if your user made a session with one of the backend server it will always land it there that would be decided with the help of cookie connection draining is is, is a wonderful feature it will uh, drain the connection gracefully for the planned updates on the backend uh, virtual machines all right so we we don't want that as of now so that's that's why it is like this and uh, no other settings we needed we only needed the http settings so that we could uh, transfer the traffic on the backend that's how we will going to do it let me hit next and review and create now it will take uh, 15 to 20 minutes sometimes so while it is creating i have already created this much almost with this not almost with exactly same configuration let me show you if i go to application gateway i click here and i'll take you through all the settings right so in the configuration we have the same standard v2 and no auto scale Web we have not enabled backends we have not added yet everything is same http setting it's the 0180 port http front end is the public ip this one private is not configured at ssl we have we have not done it this is the listener on which uh, it will listen the the traffic and as per the rule it must be and it is associated with the rule as per this rule the traffic would be transferred or diverted or routed so rule is basic right rule zero one basic so it would be basic routing so if i click here uh, it will show the same page that we were working on uh, on our other uh, app gateway which is in progress right now okay so let me close this this is the same thing so this is all uh, this is absolutely same configuration as uh, the gateway that I showed you, you can see rule 01 type basic listener 01. Now, only thing we need to do right now, if I click on overview, and here is the public IP, our traffic would be listen here with, with what? With listener. And listener will uh, route the traffic as per what? As per the rules that we have created. So, when, when the listener will listen and send the traffic as per rule and http setting will pick that and uh, send it to the uh, backend server as per the http setting that we have 80 http all right cool this is the whole uh, this is what is happening on this app gateway so let me go ahead and uh, put the public ip here i have not configured the backend yet just wanted to confirm <clears throat> that's why it says bad gateway now let's go here go back to the backend pools and <clears throat> click here now you you also need to check this we can have multiple kind of backend pool you know backend uh, uh, machines it could be a virtual machine it could be vmss it could be app service it could be ip address that means public ip address you could you could use your on premises machine if you have access this app gateway has you know <clears throat> those kind of things so for now we have only virtual machines here so let me pick one. I'm gonna create the Ubuntu, another virtual machine, which is uh, Debian. Okay, let's click on save. So now, if you if if you are with me, if you're listening to me, what I'm trying to say, uh, traffic will come on the listener. Listener will send the traffic to the backend pool as per the rules, and HTTP setting will decide how the traffic would be received on the destination. This is the crux of the matter all right now i think uh, is it it's updating right now so we need to wait for a couple of minutes while it is uh, updating as soon as it is updated we could uh, see the traffic moving to the backend pools uh, which are which are what which are ubuntu and debian with uh, apache and nginx installed on it so if we refresh it for a couple of times we can see traffic moving to both the virtual machines okay so uh while it is uh, in progress, let me 
add few things to our uh, this video. As I said at the very beginning, uh, application gateway is a web traffic load balancer that enables you to manage traffic to your web applications. It could be on a virtual machine, it could be on app services, it could be uh, on a virtual machine running on on-premises, it could be VMSs, okay? <clears throat> and application gateway can make uh, routing decisions based on additional attributes of an HTTP request. For example, as I said at the very beginning, the URI path based or host headers, or even multi-site that we I showed you while we we're configuring the listener, right? And it has uh, so many other features as connection draining, I said, that will help you. It, it, it is also, it can also uh, do the uh, SSL offload, right? We also use this as an ingress controller for Azure Kubernetes services. We do have WAF for this. And if you remember when we were creating the IP address, this IP address, this was static, it gets standard. Uh, session affinity, the cookie-based session affinity we talked about. So these are the, the uh, wonderful features that App Gateway provides. That's one of the uh, reason that this is one of the best or one of the uh, first choice of all the architects for, for load balancing because of those many features. Okay, so it, I see it's still in progress. So uh, while it is still in progress, I think I should uh, start uh, or add one more thing. Uh, I mean to say start to check if it is diverting traffic. Okay, it is there on the Apache 2. You see, this is the IP address of App Gateway. Let me refresh it. It is still uh, showing Apache 2 because this one is, uh, completed and other deployment is in progress. As soon as this is done, it will also start sending uh, traffic to the Nginx as well. So this is the very first basic uh, load balancing video on App Gateway. Along with the lab, we also talked about so many other features and capabilities of uh, application gateway and <clears throat> In next video, we'll try to secure it by putting uh, SSL certificate. <clears throat> and then we'll go with uh, multi-site configuration and also uh, URL-based, uh, path-based. For example, you have multiple servers, some is hosting videos, some is hosting images, and as per the URL, the traffic is diverted to that particular server. We can do that. So we'll see those things in our upcoming video. Uh, let's see if it is st still in progress. So you know what I'm trying to explain here, uh, but it would be fun if it would have done it. <laughs> Unnecessarily, it is just extending my video. I think I should pause it once it is done. Uh, I'll, I'll start again. And uh, we have the Nginx now, same IP address. So we got both the uh, backend targets added and it's working absolutely fine well thank you for watching let's meet in another video where we'll be secure in this you see it's not secure we're gonna add the ssl thank you for watching you have a good day bye bye